you're right, it's white. It's that new Oxidol white. Yes, new Oxidol is white, and it washes clothes whiter than ever before. The cleanest wash you can get from any soap in the world. Oxidol's own Ma Perkins. You're right, it's white. It's that new Oxidol white. Now, Oxidol washes clothes whiter than ever before. Gives you the whitest wash in Oxidol history. Yes, new white Oxidol is the whiter, whiter soap for a whiter, whiter wash. You'll see that wonderful new whiteness in everything you wash. Napkins and tablecloths will sparkle as never before. Bath towels wash snowier than ever. Dish towels, bed sheets, and pillowcases look whiter than the whitest clouds in the sky when you wash them in new white Oxidol. You're sure to say... You're right, it's white. It's that new Oxidol white. Yes, you're right. With new white Oxidol, it gives you the cleanest wash it's possible to get from any soap in the world. The whitest Oxidol wash you've ever had. And even if you dry your wash inside, as long as you use new white Oxidol, your clothes will keep that wonderful new whiteness throughout their life. New Oxidol is truly safe for washable colors, too. It gives your tub of colored clothes new brightness and sparkle. You'll just never be satisfied with any other wash day soap once you see the whiter, brighter wash you get with new white Oxidol. Your dealer has it now, so try it. New white Oxidol, the greatest Oxidol Procter & Gamble ever offered. The whiter, whiter soap for a whiter, whiter wash. And now, for Ma Perkins. Well, at 5.30 this morning, Ma heard Joseph who's become almost like a son to her, say he hated Rushville Center and everybody in it. He was going away. All because folks around have kidded him about his friendship with Ann Morrison, whom, incidentally, he hasn't been able to see since the night of their big date at the country club. Joseph became so angry that last night he struck a man, Peter Skillet, the clerk over at the hotel. Struck him and hurt him badly. Well, it's about 8.30 now, and over at the lumber yard... Well, listen. Ma? Is that you, Ma? Oh, Shuffle. Yep, yep, yep. Right the second time, Willie. It's me, Shuffle. Morning. Well, for Pete's sake. Real banker's hours, 8.30, no less. I suppose your alarm clock didn't go off or something. No. Got up and woke the chickens, as usual. Just couldn't get started. Felt like I had a couple of flat irons attached around each foot. Come by Ma's, too. That made me even later. What you reading? This? Hmm. It's a copy of the magazine, People, USA. Effie and me got a subscription. Came this morning. Figured it'd bring it down to the office with me. I never do get a chance to read it at home once Evie and Junior get their hands on it. Hmm. It's got a story. Uh, says it's the first installment of the story on Rushville Center. Here, it's real interesting, Shuffle. Take a look. Uh-huh. Boy, that Mr. Sinclair sure can write. Well, I wouldn't have surprised you too much, Willie. He's a writer. Yeah, well, just the same. Here, got some good pictures in it. You know, this Miss Morrison's all right, too, when it comes to taking pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful picture of Main Street, here. Looking down toward the center of town. Them's the elm trees out in front of the Pendleton, see? Yep, yep, yep. That's the kind of pictures I want to see this morning. Places and things. No people. Well, people, what's the matter with you? Here, look, Shuffle, here's a picture of Ma's house. You know, I'd forgotten we once called the place the Maples. Mr. Sinclair must have dug that up somewhere. Listen what it says under the picture. The home of Ma Perkins, known affectionately as the Maples, from the two old trees on the front lawn. Along with the churches and the town hall, this typical home and the gracious lady who presides over it reflect the heart and spirit of America's typical town. Yep, 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 yep. I'm afraid there ain't too much heart or spirit in, what do they call it? picturesque house or gracious lady this morning, Willie. Well, what's eating you, Shuffle? You look like the last rose of summer ever since you walked in the front door. Mm. What's happened to Ma? Her heart and spirit was all right the last time I saw her last night. She was a little put out, maybe, about Joe and him feeling so head up against the town. Well, the little put out has become a lot. You ain't circulated, have you? Circulated? Around town last night and this morning. Of course not. You walked us home from Ma's last night. I went right to bed. What happened? Our friend Joey's in trouble, Willie. Trouble? Yep, yep, yep. What kind of trouble? 
Well, Mr. Peter Skillet talked out of turn once too often last night. Him and his heap big joke how Joe and Miss Morrison was out smooching at the country club the other night. Got run in by the state police. Well, last night, Pete did his talking out of turn down at the coffee pot in front of Joe. Cracked real wise once or twice, and Joe walloped him. Joe walloped? Yep. <whistles> Holy Moses. Took some of, some of Doc Stevens' fanciest hem-stitching to put Brother Skillet together again. Stitches? You mean Joe walloped him that hard? Well, it wasn't all Joey. Pete fell over backwards and landed in a glass showcase, and the glass did the cutting up that Doc Stevens had to patch up. Well, what do you know? When did all this happen, Shuffle? Last night, supper time. Constable Jim Tookie come by and told me about half past ten. Oh, you're a fine one. You didn't even let me know. Oh, sweet Jerusalem, Willie. I just didn't know which way to turn. I had to go over and break the news to Ma. Joe, he run off somewhere. How do you like that? And me, fast asleep. Well, I figured it wouldn't be too long before the whole town found out. Thought for certain Matilda Pendleton would be calling Evie to spill the dirt. They got a friend visiting from Chicago, a young fellow. Uh, the Pendleton's? Yeah, his name is Chapman. Friend of Gladys's. Why? Well, he got bopped, too. Yeah. What? Yep. Yeah. Him and Gladys, they come by the restaurant about the time the fireworks started. The young fellow rushed on in, tried to act big and heroic like a peacemaker. And Joe bopped him? Right on the nose. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, what do you know? Augustus and Matilda have been hot under the collar right from the beginning. The way this whole America's typical town business has been handled. Mm -hmm. Look at this magazine story here. Just look at it. There's Ma's house, all right. But do you see the Pendletons? Uh Uh-uh. No, sir. Just the trees out on their front lawn. Mm -hmm. You didn't even get your trees mentioned, did you? Pendleton has at least got that much of a mention. Sure. Very funny. Oh, now, I ain't saying it's funny, Willie. It's... It ain't no kidding matter when Joe turns up at three or four o'clock in the morning all broke up and tells Ma he's going to leave town. Huh? Leave town? Yeah, leave town. Joe? When? Well, Ma tried to talk him out of it. According to Faye, I'd just seen her when I come by the house. You know, and I know, it'll break Ma's heart if he does go. Of course. Well, Shuffle, I said right from the start, Miss Ann Morrison was too rich for Joe's blood. When it comes to romancing, he ain't even in the same league with her. Well, Willie, maybe not, but the uh, way I see it, if, if everyone attended to his own knitting, and the, the whole thing had passed, just as Ma said it would right along. But no! Everybody had to put his two cents in, and now we got trouble. Well, how's Ma this morning? Did you see her? No, she went down to see Constable Tookie to try to square things between Joe and the law. <laughs> Oh, I did. You gonna take it, son? Yeah, I'll get it, Shuffle. Hello? Perkins Lumber Yard, William Fitz, manager speaking. Oh, good morning, Mr. Sinclair. Yeah, fine morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine, Charlie. Uh, Ma? Uh, no, she ain't here, Mr. Sinclair. What? Oh, you tried to get her at home? No, I know she ain't there either. Yeah, I, I, I know. Well, just a minute, Mr. Sinclair. What's the matter, Willie? Uh, he wants to know where he can find Ma. Shall I tell him? He might as well. Might perk Ma up just talking to him. Yeah. Uh, hello, Mr. Sinclair. Uh, you can find Ma over at Constable Jim Tookie's office. Yeah, the, the constable. His office is over at Town Hall down in the basement. Yeah. You'll find Ma with him. As long as you and I have lived in this town and known each other, Ma Perkins, I've never yet turned down a request of yours. But doggone it, this is different, Ma. I got a lot of respect for Joe. Like him fine. But I've got a job to do. I'm the duly elected constable of this town, and I got to do my duty. A Joe ran wild last night, hauled off and socked Peter Skillet. Then that young fellow visiting from Chicago... He's got a nose on him this morning the size of a balloon. Not to mention the damages. You know that glass showcase over at the restaurant? Nick Christopopoulos says that that set him back $70, that showcase. Just broke to smithereens, a million pieces. Tarnation, Joe should have come in and seen me right off this morning, Ma, instead of sending you down. Oh, he didn't send me down, Jim. Well, uh... Joseph don't know that I'm here. Don't you see it? It isn't as if the boy set out to do harm. He's a good boy. You know that, Constable. It's it's 
Just that he was angry and hurt and... Oh, I I come by Peter Skillet's, talked to his missus this morning. Then I went to Dr. Tom Stevens, said if there was anything that needed to be done, we'd pay for it. Dr. Stevens said that Peter would be all right. It's just a matter of time, he said, time for his wounds to heal. He, he said there would be no scars or anything. Whatever the damage is, we'll pay gladly. I, I don't know what we can do, of course, about that young man from Chicago. But, oh, Jim, Joseph has paid a thousand times over already in his mind and conscience for what he did. Must he pay some more? I, I'm not saying that he was right in what he did. But must he pay some more? I'm sorry, Ma. There's nothing I can do. It ain't up to me. Tell Joe he's got to come in and give himself up, or I just got to, to arrest him for disturbing the peace. You're right. It's white. It's that new Oxidol white. Not a day goes by that some woman somewhere doesn't discover an astonishing new whiteness in her wash. Because now, clothes wash whiter than ever before with new white Oxidol. It gives you the whitest wash in Oxidol history. You'll see how white this new Oxidol is as you pour it from the package. But best of all, just see how white it washes your clothes. Your Oxidol wash will actually be the cleanest it's possible to get from any soap on earth. The whitest Oxidol wash you've ever had. You're right. It's white. It's that new Oxidol white. Even when you dry your wash inside, that new whiteness is there. Yes, there for the life of your clothes, as long as you use new white Oxidol. New Oxidol is just as wonderful for washable colors, too. Truly safe. They sparkle and shine. So next time you buy laundry soap, be right. Buy new white Oxidol, the whiter, whiter soap, for a whiter, whiter wash. Well, Constable Jim Tookie didn't relish the idea any, but he did warn that he'd have to arrest Joe. However, Alfred Sinclair is going to have something to say about that when he drops by to call from Ma at the constable's office tomorrow. But now this is Charlie Warren inviting you to listen again tomorrow, same time, same station, to Oxidol's own Ma Perkins, presented by the Procter & Gamble Company. You're right. It's white. It's that new Oxidol white. Yes, new Oxidol is white. And it washes clothes whiter than ever before. The cleanest wash you can get from any soap in the world.